Hello, welcome to the Monday, October 16th, 2017 edition of the Sands Internet Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Singapore. Of course, malware still frequently arrives as an email, which often requires that you extract it out of an Outlook message file. Well, Didi took a look today at Outlook message files uh, to explain how they are exactly composed and how to extract these malicious attachments directly out of the message file. And he shows how to use Oli Dump in order to accomplish this task. Well, if your users don't receive malware via email, they probably will do so via a website. And uh, last week uh, we had yet another case where abandoned domains and included content in a website did cause problems. This time it was already battered Equifax, but also a number of other sites, including the Equifax competitor TransUnion, who were exposed to this particular flaw. The root cause here was a tool called FireClick that was installed on the affected websites. FireClick is one of the user analytics tools. It has been discontinued by its parent company Digital River for a while now and uh, when discontinuing the tool they actually didn't renew an associated domain name which was now picked up by some malvertising firm that used it to push fake flash player update ads. One problem I often find with websites is that they include numerous tracking and user analytics tools, often with redundant functionality, which kind of indicates that probably these tools get always added and old tools never get removed once they're actually no longer useful. And this opens these websites up uh, to these kind of compromises. If you are running a website that does use uh, these third-party tools then please occasionally do go over all of these tools make sure they're still serving a purpose and they're still being supported and apparently a number of Windows 10 and 2016 server machines refused to reboot after applying the most recent Microsoft patch the problem only affected systems that did retrieve Delta patches from internal OS or SSEM servers so this did not affect end users who download these patches directly from Microsoft. If you are rebooting an affected system, you will get an error message about an inaccessible boot device. Nothing remotely that you can do to fix the system. Microsoft has published an advisory with the details about how to fix the problem. You'll find a link to it in the show notes. And ESET observed a new strain of Android ransomware that it calls double locker for the simple fact that it doesn't just encrypt all your data, it also changes the pin on your phone. To recover infected phones, users have to do a factory reinstall unless the phone is rooted, in which case it may be possible to bypass the pin lock. However, your data will still be encrypted and there's currently no decryption software for this particular malware. Interestingly, this malware apparently, according to ESET, started out as a banking malware. I guess the bad guys found out that ransomware may be a better way to make money. And over the last few weeks, I had a number of stories of uh, websites that got either compromised or where the website intentionally installed the CoinHive or other cryptocurrency miners. More and more websites are being found that use these cryptocurrency miners in order to earn revenue. In many cases, it doesn't appear to be actually a compromise of the website, but the script was intentionally installed in part to replace or supplement revenue from ads. And it also looks like browser extensions are joining the game here. The latest one that was discovered was LDI. LDI is not a very well known browser extension, but instead it does recruit users via fairly obnoxious and hard to close ads. 
Well, uh, the extension itself just promises that it will check your homepage, whether or not it is compatible with Apple, whatever that means. But of course, the advantage of a browser extension like this compared to code running on a website is that this browser extension can run all the time while the code on the website is only running while you're visiting it. Well, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.